Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you with another weekly episode. And today, I've got some interesting stuff to talk about and to show you. Um, I don't have a lot of stuff, but what we do have, I think, is going to be, at least to me, is going to be pretty interesting. So, um, well, let's just start. I got the next in the One Stop Diecast Racing Legends series of these square body pickups. We got USA 1. Um, this is sweet. I love this series of uh, exclusives. This was sent to me by One Stop Diecast to show you. And then I think I ordered an extra one from some other hobby dealer. Um, but anyway, because I wanted to. And uh, these are just fantastic. Uh, I've talked about them before, of course. Um, they're just awesome. So the Racing Legend series. This is number four in the series. I'll probably grab out the other three trucks and we'll take a look at those in the series with this one so we can just kind of get an update on the series and what's out right now. Um, they're limited to 2,496 pieces and you can pick them up at One Stop Diecast. There's going to be some other hobby dealers that are also carrying these because they did, I believe, wholesale them as well. So definitely check them out. There's ultra reds of these two that I've got one of. Um, I'd like to get all of them. Uh, but they're going to be tough, you know. The ultras, these square bodies, these, especially these hobby exclusive ones, can get pretty expensive. So, anyway, there's that. Uh, we're going to obviously open that up in the next uh, part of the video. And then we are going to take a look at a couple of items. Well, Dicastrum actually ordered two of these uh, from some hobby dealer and said I could have one. So, that was cool. Um, and so, I got one of these Mini GT Land Rover Defenders, the Camel Trophy uh, winner. Uh, dirty version so we will take a look at this outside of the box this should be a pretty cool thing to look at and then of course i'll grab the clean version out we can set the two side by side and see what all they did uh with that so that's going to be cool too and then i got some mail from japan i had to ship um i buy some stuff from japan uh typically from hobby link japan um because I like their private warehouse feature, which basically means they build a box for you so you don't have to get everything shipped at once. Now, the only caveat with that is they don't hold on to it forever. They only hold on to it, I think, like 60 days or something like that. And then they ship. So I had nothing else to pair with these two items, so I just had to get these two items shipped. Um, but they did come pretty quick, even though I picked the really cheap shipping. Uh, but I got a Tomica Premium Lamborghini Countach, 25th anniversary. That's going to be sweet to take a look at, so I'm excited for that. Um, really cool. I like these Tomica Premium cars. They don't exactly run in 164 scale. They're usually a little bit larger, um, just slightly larger. But we will take a look at that. And then I got this BM Creations Suzuki Swift, or BM Creations Junior Suzuki Swift uh, GTI in white. And uh, this should be interesting as well. At first, I looked at this box. I'm like, dang it, the wheels are messed up in the front. But then I realized that it comes with spare wheels. And I think it, they're steering. So they're just turned a little bit. So we'll open up this and check that out as well and see what that has to offer. So we got an eclectic group of items here including this, which this was just an oddball eBay find, and I just decided I had to get it. It's a Lamborghini Countach uh, from the Ertl Speed Strips series. <laughs> and yeah, it's weird. There's apparently you put this little viewer inside this car, and then you can view a comic strip that's in the car. I don't know exactly how that works, but it sounds interesting, and I picked it up because it's a Countach. They actually have uh, some other kind of desirable uh, toolings and I'm kind of interested to know where the toolings came from if they made them just for this series or if these were adapted from some other thing someone else will probably know uh, about this but it's Ertl and I think Ertl is technically owned by I think Tomy now I'm not sure but there's a Ferrari Testarossa I think I might have to grab we'll see what these are like and I don't know. They're just kind of goofy. I thought they'd be interesting to take a look at. I just picked one up off of eBay, and we're just going to check it out. So there's that. Uh, I did pick up one mainline Hot Wheel, and <laughs> that's this guy right here. Uh, new for 2021, this Audi Avant RS2. 
and it's a new model for 2021 so we'll go ahead and we'll open up this as well i, I grabbed this at a store i just I saw it there and picked it up um and then lastly this is going to be maybe the most interesting part about this video and probably how we're going to start the second half uh i did an interview or someone from a youtube channel interviewed me and in return or whatever for my time they sent me um a little box and i'm going to show you the contents of that so um com and collected is the name of the youtube channel so it's com like dot com and collected and i'll i'll link it in the description of this video so definitely a nice guy uh named jeremy uh really nice guy uh interviewed me we, we talked for like about an hour and a half or something like that and he'll probably post a video to his channel of that interview or snippets from it um probably in a week or so so and when he does do that i'll definitely share it to my channel so you guys can uh check it out if you're interested and it was just kind of uh talking about collecting and yada 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 so he's kind of new to the die cast collecting realm has been collecting other stuff um for a while but how he got started was in jurassic park stuff so he sent me uh the jurassic park matchbox is kind of how he got started so he sent me um just a couple of uh Jurassic Park Max box to check out because I don't have any of these in my collection actually. So this Jeep too, and he actually sent me a post-it note with uh, how these are relevant or where they appeared in the movies. So that's kind of neat. So we'll take a look at that. But the the real thing that was interesting about this is he said um, that he thought he found, and the way he discovered my channel actually was from a video I did a long time ago on the different Ferrari Testarossas um, that I have in my collection. The uh, my collection of Hot Wheels Ferrari Testarossas. So he said that he thought he found a rare variation that he couldn't find anywhere um, of this Ferrari Testarossa and sent me a picture. And I was like very, very intrigued by it because I've never seen this variation of it. So check that out. All right, it's very interesting. It's carded. The card is real crispy looks really nice uh what's odd about this is it's a black car with a red base and a tan uh tan and red interior uh, there's a two-piece interior to this car and it's on this card that's crispy and the card is from um i want to say the card is probably from like 1989 maybe 88 somewhere in there right before the blue card era of hot wheels so i was very interested in this and so he sent me a picture of it and then he sent me the car um as a gift for for doing that interview and i was really excited to get it because i'm like wow this is a oddball fine and i didn't think anything of it but uh and obviously he picked it up at like a, a antique mall okay so he didn't pay much for this or anything like that but so the problem is is when we look at the base now i can finally see it the base is epoxied this is a custom or it's not a custom and someone tried to fake like some rare variation obviously they didn't try to get a lot of money for it they i think he bought it for like two dollars and 25 cents or something like that so he didn't pay anything for it they did a really good job of recarding this and we are going to take a look at this in the next segment and uh we're going to dive into it a bit because i'm going to we're going to I'm going to pull out my Ferrari Testarossas and we're going to try to figure out what parts and cars that he took uh, or whoever made this, uh, where they got the parts. Uh, the oddest part about it is that tan back there. And if, from what I understand, I think having tan in that part of the interior is actually pretty uncommon. Um, I'm not even sure that I have a version of the Testarossa with a tan bit like that. Um, so I don't know. But we're going to take a look at my Testarossas. We're going to see if we can pick out the ones that maybe built up the uh, built up this one. Uh, but yeah, lesson to you new collectors. Um, always, if you see something you haven't seen before and it's a Hot Wheels, even if it's on card like this, this is a real good... I mean, it's... You cannot really tell at all that this has been recarded, and uh, you know it's got the correct card for our Testarossa number forty-two. Like you know, it's very very correct. I think the original car in this probably was maybe red, 
Um, but we're going to take a close look at this and just kind of show you. So yeah, lesson to you new collectors, when you see something that you think is rare, definitely just, you know, take a peek at the base. You guys may not be able to see that at this angle, but when we, um, when I show it to you, uh, close up, you're going to see that it's, it's obviously been, uh, manipulated. And we're going to open this up, of course, because there's no reason to really keep it carded, except for it is kind of a cool little example of a lesson learned. Uh, but I think we should open it and uh, just kind of take even a closer look at it. We'll see how strong that uh, epoxy is holding up. We might even just take the thing apart. So that should be fun. Actually, I don't think we're going to start the second half. Maybe we'll end the second half with kind of this explanation because it's going to be kind of long. So... Whatever, just uh, stay tuned and uh, let's check out some of this stuff close up. All right guys, so let's actually start by taking a look at these racing legends. I know we've seen the, the first four I've featured on the channel, or the first three, and then this is the fourth one in the series. And just every one of these is just fantastic and I def definitely recommend picking up a whole set. Um, so they're not all out yet. There's going to be 12 total cars. The first six are listed on the back here. So two more to go. Um, you can read the back there. Over the top funny cars dominated Jake drag racing popularity from the late 60s to mid 70s. So that's what these cars or what these trucks are kind of after. They got those liveries. So it's kind of cool too because some of these cars have been released in drag strip demons from Hot Wheels and some of them also have been released um, as dragsters, drag cars uh, in Johnny Lightning. So you can kind of find the complement to each one of these trucks. Uh, if you look hard enough, you can probably find, I don't know if there's one for every single one that they're putting out, um, but there is, I think, quite a few uh, that they're putting out. You can find a uh, matching car. I only have, I think, one matching car for one of these trucks, and that's the Army one right here. I've got the Drag Strip Demon Hot Wheel one. So these are kind of similar. You know, you got kind of USA looking. This is Bruce Larson's USA one support vehicle. So let's go ahead and open up this. Very, very cool. There you go. You got your uh, fast facts on the side. The artwork looks good. You got a simple, just one stop die cast logo up here standard auto world card and uh, just i'm loving these releases they're all they're all fantastic they're all going to be the uh, standard ride height version of the truck as well so that's something you can note um and just very very cool so there you go just digging this stuff Sutler chevrolet co Really, really cool. So your standard fare for the casting, it's got, you know, of course, the opening hood, uh, the tailgate that goes down, and it just is awesome. These kind of pair well, actually, with, like, the lead sled release from Auto World as well. It's just there's not many Auto World releases that have kind of, like, a sort of a vintage racing kind of look to them, and um, the few that are out, basically the one-stop die-cast one, and I think, I mean, really... As far as vintage racing goes, the only other one is probably that lead sled, right? I don't know if there's been any others. And uh, they are just, they're cool. And uh, I like them. So I'm just a big fan of this of this set. So I definitely recommend it. I'm very, very lucky that, uh, you know, One Stop decided they would uh, send me one of each of these models as they come out so that I can show them on the channel. And... Uh, it's just really good, and I've been buying, I think I think I have an extra of each one that I ended up buying myself anyway, because I wanted to keep a set carded for now, because Auto World is pretty much, you guys know it's the brand I, I hoard, basically. So this one looks pretty good. There's a, yeah, we got the, the white wall on that tire's a little bit off-center, nothing too major. Other than that, quality seems to be real good, and I have a backup anyway. Um... Is that, that looks like that would clean out of that bed. A little dirty back there, but that's all right. Um, so, yeah, so what's been out so far? This was the first one, the Hawaiian. Very, very cool. This one's in Drake Strip Demons as well. Just an awesome truck. And then uh, the Jungle Gym was the second one. This one I've actually got the Ultra Red for, 
which I believe all the Ultra Reds follow the same sort of format here. They all have white rims, white tires, white interior, and Ultra Red body, and Ultra Red base. And I believe that's how those all are, and they all look really good with the actually with this uh, these liveries on them. The only thing I would say, I mean, if they put white rims and just put black tires on it, I think I'd be even more happy with it. Just because you guys know, I just I'm not a huge fan of the colored tires. I've mentioned it quite a few times, but still stoked to have this ultra red, and I'm very very stoked. I mean, if I can try to find the ultra red for all of them eventually, that would be good. But I'm behind already, quite a bit. And they're expensive, so I can't just throw money at the problem right now. It's just, there's no way. This actually might be my favorite so far, this uh, Don the Snake Army liveried one. I think looks pretty awesome. This actually, I think, is my favorite. And I love that it's got the Goodyear letter tires and um, these rims on it. I think, look... I like these rims better. This is like my favorite combination. The standard ride height with these rims. These are my favorite rims so far that I've seen on this truck. Um, these look pretty cool too, but I just, I like, I like the look of these, I think, better. So, so there you have it. So there's that. Uh, yeah, so one-stop die cast, go check them out. Um, good hobby dealer regardless. I mean, he sells more than just these. So uh, if these aren't your gig, uh, he's got all sorts of other stuff. He gets a lot of stuff, so check them out all right let's take a look at this mini gt you guys know mini gt has pretty much become one of my favorite brands i mention it every time i guess i can stop because i show them enough uh land rover defender 110 1989 camel trophy winner team uk number 221 and uh so we've seen this one came out one of my favorite uh mini gt models this camel trophy Land Rover. Just so much detail in this thing for the price. You just cannot beat it, really. See, these Mini GTs are really not that expensive. I mentioned in my last video, and someone really kind of ranted on Mini GT, saying they're not that great, and they have quality issues and paint issues and stuff like that. To be honest, I've either, I guess, just really gotten lucky, or that person's just really not lucky with these things. Because the majority of the ones, I don't think I've, I mean, I've maybe had an issue here or there, but really compared to other brands that I get tons of, um, Mini GT seems to be top notch in quality. You know, you can say Tomica Limited Vintage maybe is the king of quality, but those are more expensive. And um, the other thing about those is Tomica Limited Vintage, I've seen people, you know, have those in their collection for years and they come, they come and they have paint rash. So time will only tell how these models will hold up. Um, but I'm just hoping none of the Mini GTs start to get like paint rash or anything like that. Some of the uh, import brands I've noticed uh, suffer from that issue or that issue can pop up from time to time. Anyway, that's a whole nother topic, but I love Mini GT. I'm a huge fan of what they're doing. Um, so I think like the biggest complaint you could have is they don't have like disc brakes when they have like open wheels where you can see you know, inside the wheel and they don't put the, the brake disc and calipers in there. Big deal. Um, it doesn't bother me a bit. Could they add that detail? Yeah, they probably could, but I don't really care. So here is the race worn version, the dirty version. And gosh, it looks cool. So I have a second one of these actually coming as well because I thought this was so cool. I think this is a model to hang on to. I don't know if uh, I'm going to start doing it, maybe. I'm not sure, but am I going to start buying duplicates of Mini GT just to hang on to them for a rainy day? I might. I don't know. I think some of these models are going to become very desirable and maybe quite expensive down the line. And the entry level for these, price-wise, is just, it's cheap enough where you can maybe get a duplicate here and there and just kind of hang on to it. So, uh, this one looks really good. Uh, the the dirtiness on it looks fantastic. I like how they did the windows. A little bit on the base. This tire's a little crooked, but that is completely fixable. Um, the brush guard in the front is slightly crooked. So there's a quality issue for you. You know, we're honest here. 
Um, this one's completely straight, I believe, on this one. It's perfect. And on this one, it is, you know, slightly crooked. That could be part of the race worn kind of kind of deal, right? I don't think that's intentional. But uh, it is it is slightly crooked, so if we're honest, there is a slight quality issue here with the, uh, the brush guard. Um, but other than that, I don't see any other problems. This thing does have a trailer hitch on the back as well. And I think the livery is exactly the same. So I think it is exactly the same uh, Land Rover. Just uh, one's before race and one is after, right? And I think that's it. But I love it. It's really good. And like I said, I love what Mini GT is doing. Mini GT and Auto World, those are my favorite brands, like hands down. I like Tomica Limited Vintage too. I like some Tarmac Works, and I like some Inno 64. And as far as domestic brands go, you know, I like some Greenlight. I like, uh, of course, my Hot Wheels and, uh, you know, the occasional M2. But uh, Mini GT and Auto World are really where it's at for me. All right. Well, let's take a look at Atomica real quick. Let's uh, take a look at this uh, 25th anniversary Lamborghini Countach. Um... So there you go, take a peek around the box. You got official Lamborghini licensing, all that good stuff. Uh, comes in a little baggie inside the thing, and you get this stuff. And then the car. So I believe this is a brand new tooling uh, for the Tomica Premium line. And it looks pretty awesome. Uh, no scissor doors on this one. They did do scissor doors for the, the Lamborghini Diablo, and that casting is fantastic. This one looks pretty good, too. So, if you're not familiar with the Tomica Premium stuff, it's somewhere in between basic and Tomica Limited Vintage. And uh, it's got plastic wheels, plastic base, metal body, but it has a ton of weight to it. The paint is, like, very high quality. Quality control on these is actually fantastic um at least in my experience like i said i may be just getting lucky who knows but everything is good like the inserted details for the headlights are very very crisp um you don't see any like flashing or anything like that uh the back of this car is just painted detail which is fine um again plastic tires but you do get you know unique wheels the wheels are appropriate for the car and uh, they tend to look pretty good. Like I said, they're slightly bigger than 164 scale. This is 161 scale. So slightly bigger. And uh, it's got an opening engine compartment. This is a mid-engine car. But if I can get in there. That's always fun. This is my go-to method. I say it every time. I'm so dumb for not doing it. I gotta get a guitar pick down here. I got plenty of them. <clears throat> and there's the motor detail. Just black in there, um, but it is actually quite detailed inside of there. Uh, that's the other thing with these. Is a lot of times it'll have suspension. This one does not have suspension and a lot of times i'll have an opening part this is opening part for this one obviously is the opening part we're seeing right now um, sometimes they have flip up headlights there's all sorts of stuff that they've done with these castings and they're really cool because they're they're very very detailed but they're very very robust like you could give this to a kid to play with and uh he'd be able to do it now you probably wouldn't do that living here in the u.s because they can get a little expensive because of the shipping uh, from Japan and the reselling reselling to uh, U.S. collectors, it's a, probably a lot more expensive than what they are uh, when you go, if you lived in where these were carried and you were able to just go to the store and buy them. So, but very, very cool. I like it quite a bit. I'm glad to add that. Countach, 25th anniversary Countach to the collection. All right, so we've got a couple more things to look at. Yeah, we got uh, the BM Creations Junior Suzuki Swift GTI. Let's open this up. So BM Creations, this is the second BM Creations car to enter my collection. The first one I was sort of impressed with. We'll, we'll see how this one looks. So this is cool. All right, so... Very, very interesting. We got the car itself, and then they always have some sort of accessory. 
And this one, of course, as we can see, the accessory is some wheels. And they are on this interesting looking mechanism here. So we're going to have to take a nice look into that. Maybe switch these wheels out because those other wheels look kind of cool. All right, so <clears throat> Suzuki Swift twin cam valve, 16 valve little car. Um, it's got some good detail. Ooh, to change out the wheels, we would have to grab a screwdriver. You may still do it. So the front wheels turn, and that is kind of a cool feature. They kind of get jammed up there, but let's see here if we can turn them a little bit. Kind of neat. Um, so you can just put them straight on if you want to. There you go. Uh, the car itself is very detailed. We got, uh, you know, lensed inserts for taillights. They're a little bit crooked. Other than that, they're good. You got the kind of details on the side mirrors. Hard plastic side mirrors. Uh, lens details are the front. And the fit and finish isn't, like, fantastic on these. But these are not very expensive um, either. They're kind of, uh, I think they're maybe, I want to say like 10 bucks a piece, maybe something like that. <clears throat> just depending on where you can find them again they're not like sold in stores obviously around here so you got to get them off the old ebay likely or find a hobby dealer that carries them um let's go ahead and do this oh uh, might as well i gotta see how this wheel situation works out the screws and they're very very tight so you undo the screw and you should be able to just pull the base off and this is what it looks like in here so we've got two screws there and two screws there to make up the uh, steering mechanism and that's how that is well let's go ahead and we'll change out the front ones why not so I told you guys this is going to be sort of an interesting video. We're really kind of getting into some stuff here. Ooh. Okay, so I just popped that off. And then there's this little piece right here. The other thing is where the screw went through, this thing is like split. It's broken, actually. Well, a quality issue there. And then you got this little bar that holds the, the wheels together. Let's go ahead. Uh, which way did that go? This way? Let's see if we can get this back together. Uh, there's a little bit of flashing inside of here. So this is not going as smooth as I thought it would. Where was this up front? No, it had to be back here. These are just not fitting on real good. Trying to get them in there. It's nice to do this kind of live just so you guys get an idea of what was involved. So there's that piece that goes over there and then the two screws, which I grabbed the wrong screwdriver for. <clears throat> we need a Phillips. This is actually kind of a pain. All right, I'm gonna pause this real quick. You guys get the get the idea. We're gonna just change the wheels real quick and then just save you some time. All right, so here it is completed with the uh, other wheels on it, and uh, I gotta say that was uh, a lot more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. It took me a lot longer than I thought it would be able to. It kept dropping the little pieces and stuff like that. It's just kind of a pain. Uh, Con conceptually though i think it's a very very cool idea for diecast to be able to do that the way these wheels are set up is a very neat idea um the fit and finish i think could be improved on these a little bit but just as a fun little thing swap the wheels out on and stuff like that just need a screwdriver uh it's kind of cool i don't know kind of cool let me know what you guys think about this brand if you have any bm creations in your collection and what you uh what you think about them sort of rolls not great but it does roll but kind of neat um like i said let me know what you guys what you guys think about it all right so there's that and then uh uh well we got this to look at real quick or maybe not quick i don't know speed strips super fast die cast cars with comic strips in size sir lightning in 
the toast to Mr. Chicken. So, yeah, you know, goofy, right? I just had to get it. It's Countach, and I, I like the Lamborghini Countach. Here's the other cars that are in the series. None of them have, like, a license name, but they're clearly, uh, you know, real vehicles. Like, that's a Firebird right there, the Firefly. Scorcher's a Corvette. Uh, Rockman is obviously a, an IROC. Um, yeah, you got a Ferrari Testarossa in there. You got, uh, I think, a Z, Nissan Z in there. Um, you know, some other stuff. Lucky 7, I think, is an RX-7. Uh, so, another Corvette. Yeah, so, kind of neat. Let's just, you know, open it up. So, here's the... Uh, the mechanism where you can view the comic strip we're gonna see if i can give you a view of that i'm probably not gonna be able to but we'll try here's the casting itself so the casting it has a uh, suspension it's got these frosted windows so you can't really see inside the interior because it doesn't appear there is an interior because there's this weird comic strip thing going on plastic base uh metal body plastic spoiler up here yeah it's just kind of curious maybe where this tooling came from and it looks like it probably just original seems like it's got a really good weight to it and it appears to be able to roll very very smoothly this thing would probably be pretty quick down a track uh, screw together base well let's just take a look and see if we can look at this wild thing um, so I'm guessing okay so this just hooks on like this like that this advances your slide and can we see try to get a peek in here I don't know how close we're gonna be able to get here we go you can kind of see it there Let's see if we can get it to focus on the inside there So, kind of weird, weird concept, kind of fun, I don't know, I just got it because it was a Countach. That way to the farm, bring your Countach to the farm, oh, hits a chicken, looks like, that must be the police officer, yeah, alright. Anyway, so there's that, I just thought that was kind of neat, thought it would be a neat thing to share. And there it is. Yeah, it's very 80s looking Countach. Looks pretty good. All right, so that was that. I may, I don't know, I might pick up one other one of these just because I want the Testarossa. I want to check that out. And maybe the Firebird too. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what we see what we get with that. All right, so let's. Oh, I skipped one thing. The Audi. Take a quick look at this. We're getting to that Ferrari Testarossa fake variation thing here. It's coming up. Stay tuned. This is a pretty cool car. I just thought Hot Wheels did a good job on this. Had to pick it up. You know, it's got details in the right places, all that good stuff. And uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, then we might as well take a quick look at these two. Jurassic Park. So bubble is broken this is the explorer the t-rex attacked with the kids inside okay in the first jurassic park i don't know that's the only one i've seen by the way is the first one i never watched any of the other ones oh oh so that's cool i mean that's cool it's like crunched i guess i didn't even realize that in the package so this is kind of cool i mean like if you're into these movies that's a kind of a neat little tooling it's crushed uh, the glass is broken on the top. It's all bent up in the front. Like, it just... I mean, it doesn't even sit right. And I don't know if that's by design, but... That's kind of... That's a, really kind of awesome. So, I kind of have appreciation for that. And then this other one is uh, Nedry's Jeep. When he was attacked by the Dilo. This is kind of a really decent looking Jeep, too. So, pretty cool. Uh... 
you know, I'm not much for the cross collecting kind of thing with the movie culture and uh, car collecting. I'm just a, mainly just an accurate car scale car collector. But I do appreciate this stuff as well, and I appreciate that it gets a lot of new people kind of into the hobby, you know, that may not otherwise uh, paid attention to diecast collecting until, you know, they see something that's in their like favorite movie or whatever, and then it kind of starts them on collecting. So it's kind of cool. All right, so there's those two. And now, finally, let's take a look at this. So at first appearance, it does not look like there's anything wrong with this card at all. And honestly, I would have not known it. The card is, like, in good shape. The blister's in good shape. The You can see the edge around here. I mean, yeah, you've got some little like dirt or whatever underneath here and right here is I don't know if the card was if the bubble was cut right here probably just pulled off but here's the telltale sign right here look at those rivets they are filled with epoxy and they've been drilled out so check that out Kind of disappointing, but kind of cool that I still get the opportunity kind of to show you this and talk about it. And no fault of Jeremy's. He had no clue. He really thought he found some variation here. And so, yeah, so digging this, trying to open this up. So the blister is just kind of coming off easy, except for in this spot. And you know why it's not coming off easy in this spot? Well, because this is where it was glued on this side. And you could tell because it's a little bit crusty over here. So they did a really good job of carding this. We're doing a good job, I guess, ripping it apart. But there you go. The card's crispy. They opened whatever car was originally in here. I think it was probably red. And uh, there you go. So the other tip-off before I even looked at the base was the fact that this car was a metal flake black. Now, they did put out a black uh, Testarossa, but I believe it was like back in the day and it wasn't Metal Flake. They didn't come up with a Metal Flake one until later. Um, so, and I apologize here. I've got uh, I've got Hot Wheels Wikipedia thing up, or Wiki, Hot Wheels Wiki, up, which I know is not a definitive source for these things, but there was a black version in uh, 19, I think, 87. They came with a black version and a white version. The red one, I don't think, came out in, in the main line until 88. So my guess is the original car that was in that card was red. And it was the 1988 version, which would have red base, red part of the interior, but then a black, not tan there, and, of course, a red body. Um, so that is my guess, is what the original one was. I've got my... Um, collection here of Testarossas. I don't have every variation that's out. I'm missing actually still quite a few, and uh, but I do have quite a few as well. So we're going to take a look. I'm going to pick out what I think happened um, here, what parts we have. So I think the original one, my guess at least, is that red one this one right here was the one I believe that was actually in the card originally. It's this one right here. And then they took the black interior out and the body off, obviously, used the base and the other part of the interior, which is this red. And then they put a tan one and a sparkly black one. So let's see if I can find the tan interior. They did do a red one with a tan interior. I think that was a promo piece or like a mail-in or something like that. Which I do have one of those and it's still in the... Oh, wait. Do I have it? I've got one still packaged, I think, with a tan interior. This is what I'm talking about. It might have been a McDonald's toy, actually. So here it is with the tan. And this could have been actually, this actually could have been the original car that they used. Now that I think about it, it was probably the one with the tan interior. They just threw a black body on the top. 
The body, I think, is from... I'm just kind of picking it out here. That's an enamel black. Yeah, the body, I believe, is from this release right here. This is what I think the body is from. Pretty sure that's what it is. And this is a newer... Ooh, and this one has a tan interior, too. Okay, never mind. We, I think we're just... We're getting ahead of ourselves here. I think all they did was take these two models and mix them together. So I wonder if they got a version of the other one sitting at that antique mall. But that's got to be what it is. They took uh, uh, the tan bit of the interior out of this one and the body out of this one and swapped it onto this red one. I would say the red one is pretty common. You can find this one pretty easy. Uh, this black one, when is that from? I should be able to look that up very quick for you here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, scrolling down. And let's find it. We're playing detective here, and I'm guessing that that's what they did. Because this one probably came originally on the card that it, that it was on. And then this is a newer one, and they just swapped parts and recarded it. It's just a good thing that he didn't pay a ton of money for it, right? Because that would have been bad. So this, I believe, came out in 96. Would have been this sparkly black one with a tan interior. Um, I don't know if I want to pull this apart. I think I'm just going to leave it. Add it to my Testarosta collection. You know, it's it stinks it's not a rare variation that I thought it was at first glance in the picture. I thought it was some transition piece or something until I started looking into it and I saw the sparkly black and I'm like, oh, shoot. And then I looked at the base. I don't know why I didn't even think to look at the base right away just to make sure it was riveted. Uh, but I didn't. And you know, I think I am just going to keep it together. I'm going to add it to the collection. It sucks. It's not a rare variation, but you know what? It's a story to tell. And uh, I'm cool with that. So we will do that. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I think this is probably pretty long. I had to do it in segments because I constantly had to stop to sneeze. My allergies are just not fun right now. Uh, so I apologize for that if you heard any sniffling or anything while I've been doing this. It's just, yeah, it's, it's tis the season. All right, so you guys, thank you very much. Have a good week, all that good stuff, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.